This is a video. You're, okay, you're moving. Right. I was just striking the pose. <laughs> so uh, you join us at the Just Add Water exhibition, which apparently is this way, and we're joined by uh, Lynn Roper and uh, Kari Fury, who, who are two artists who have um, contributed a wonderful work for the exhibition, which are going to talk us through, I believe. Who's starting? Well, this is, um, this is our little installation, and it's called We Find Ourselves at Sea. And as wild swimmers... Uh, we're very interested, first of all, in our relationship with water, mm -hmm. which is something I think Kari will talk about in a minute a bit more depth. Um, and we were interested in um, ancient methods of navigation at sea before the days of GPS. And we feel very much that uh, people have become disconnected from their watery routes. So that's what this is about. It's about reconnecting. So it starts with um, the Wild Swimmers map of um, Bantham and Burr Island, and it's a mind map rather than a, an actual... Yeah, rather um, than a geographic yeah. map, isn't it? So it's all the things that are fun for swimmers. So we've got the swoosh at the end of the River Orne there. We've got this. Oh, I can see it, yes. Yes. Is... yes, and that's a rather good current yeah. swim. We've got, we've got the end of the rip here. Oh, yes. The head of the rip. We've got some nice, interesting currents around rocks, and we've got some cormorants there that Kari's cut oh, out. Oh, wow. Yeah, if you're going close, you can actually see the cormorants. Can yes. you see them? Do you want mm. good? Fish. And so we've got the direction of where the waves come in round the island. This is the, the swell, the swell. Where, the, where the prevailing wind comes in. Um, and it's all just made from bits and pieces from the beach. So, we're, we're, yes, we're combating the plastic if we can. So we're looking at the top here, talking about combating plastic, and uh, there's a comment at the top, isn't there? He's mm. a shag. Is that a shag? Yes, because he's got a little crest, look. See? Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, the idea of him is uh, there's an awful lot of ghost fishing gear. Um, you can see a piece of it here, too. We've, I found this at Mothercombe Beach the other day, and it was all in one piece. Um, some of it is in our shag, in his stomach, because lots of times seabirds are eating, eating plastic and dying, as are others, um, is other sea life. Uh, so it's a bit of a comment about the fact that we're so disconnected from our our aquatic environments and we're, we're basically destroying them and destroying the life in them. So that's partly what this is about. Mm. You also talked about natural navigation, so that comes into this a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it does. Um, I mean, this is a representation of how you find the pole star. Um, and, you know, in days of yore, you would use the stars to guide your way. And similarly, we've got a moon here made out of cod skin. And as swimmers, we like going swimming when it's a full moon. Mm. Um, and again, it's celestial bodies, isn't it, really? And we call it a moon gazy swim after the moon gazy hair, so that's yeah. why it's a moon gazy yeah. bowl. And then this rather um, amused us. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is made from place, and it's based on a medieval purse, so we have the, uh, a galleon up above. Oh, yes. And um, to, to, to discover the direction of the swell, which is sometimes masked by different wave movements on top, allegedly the Polynesian sailors used to use their testicles uh, to feel the long-term swell of the sea. So I've tried to do it subtly. Lynn says there's no, there's no such thing as subtle testicles, but um, I leave that to history. It's probably the first representation we've had hanging up in this gallery, I would think. So. Oh, okay. well, yes. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of naked boobs and things, don't yeah. we? Actually, it's true. Yes. You get naked ladies as symbols of the beach and of swimming. I think... And figureheads on ships. And figureheads on ships. I think hmm. chaps, nether regions, we've called it the cremaster purse because that's to do with the um the muscle is the yeah. muscles that lift the testicles away from cold and oh it says that on the side of it yes nasty yes. things yes so if as your as your testicles shrink matt <laughs> it's the cremaster muscle that's been doing it is that, yeah. what, is that what happens mm -hmm. and talking about things hanging um, <laughs> <laughs> and dangling what's yeah. what's 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 this piece of the uh that's yeah, a plumb line. Okay. So plumb lines have been used for sou sounding depth for a very, very long time, thousands of years. Um, and Kari's very cleverly put the different depths of the sea because she's also into free diving, which um, so all these different depths of the sea are on there, aren't they? Do you want to talk about yeah, those? Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, certainly coastally, um, people used to navigate by just dropping a lump of something off the side of the ship and seeing how deep it was underneath. 
Hmm. Um, and the depths of the sea are frightening. I mean, this is the surface, okay. and this at the Hadi Pelagic level is 6,000 metres, which is six kilometres deep. And as swimmers, we basically don't get past the first label. Um, free divers, now what's that? That's 200 metres. Well, free divers can only get halfway down. Yeah, half the time. yeah. and then it just goes on and on. Wow. It's extraordinary. And this was a start, the idea of a, another sounding depth where they'd fill something with tallow and drop it in the sea to get samples of what's on the bottom. Oh, OK. But we so liked uh, the distressing inside the bowl, mm. we couldn't bear to fill it with tallow. Yeah, oh. so it's like that. And it's a bit like a celestial thing too, because we're down in the up in the sky and down in the sea. Mm. That's brilliant. And, and finally, yes, we have down last but not least, definitely not. The but Font um, of All Knowledge, a book. Mm. Yes. This is actually a pop up book, so maybe not quite the fount <laughs> fountain and all, of all knowledge. The sea is made from cod and the swimmers are swimming about. And it's chained, isn't it? It's a chained book. Chained book. Yeah. Because that was how knowledge used to be controlled by chaining the books. Wonderful. So uh, is this the first time you've collaborated on a project together? It is. Yes, we, do, we, um, we actually met swimming and um, Kari's officially an artist. I'm less officially an artist. <laughs> and uh, Kari started um, teaching me how to get uh, a much better, more flowing stroke. And I kind of changed my relationship with water. Mm. We've been talking a lot about swimming because Kari does this this rather amazing gliding method of swimming that works particularly for wild swimming. Mm. And uh, we've been talking a lot about it and about how you feel the water and how you stay safe. And it's all kind of grown from there, really. And yes. reading, reading different books, including The Natural Navigator by Tristan Gooley, yes. which is one. Who is on Women's Hour today? <laughs> yes. So we'll yes. look at that later. And, and I think it, it's, we've both got an interest in the sort of background of how you swim, why you swim, what it feels like. Mm. Um, yeah, keep us, we can natter forever. We can. Brilliant. Indeed. So thank you very much for this. And uh, don't forget, you can come down to the Just Add Water exhibition, um, which will be running until mid-June. So come and, come and check out this and lots of other things. <laughs>